All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you knew Marmus Bobby, guys, you really wanted me to react to why Zerka left Islam for Christianity. As far as I know, Zerka is of Albanian descent and hence grew up in a Muslim family. That's quite interesting for me personally because I'm of Macedonian descent and I grew up in a Christian family. However, later in life, I decided to revert to Islam. Before we start the video, guys, if you enjoy the content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box. With no further ado, let's have a look. I swear to God, I'm not lying. Uh, the most depressed moment of my life, I accepted Christ worst month of my life close closest person in my life my only friend was like this girl that i was dating she fucking tries to knife on facetime her throat and cuts her leg it's the worst break i've ever seen and i'm like whoa dude all the red pill guys message me drop her ass bro drop her ass and i was like i hate red pill they literally not with god all the blue pill liberals said drop her she's crazy i was like they're the exact same they don't believe in god red pill blue pill immediately want to went on a crusade called every red pillar of f and it really muddied my relationships with the dating community guys that want to have me on none of them would have me on and i tried the christ thing and i hated jesus like i was punching walls in texas all alone saying i hate jesus this is the worst month of my life what the lost job uh, i mean banned from twitch everything no money the worst things that happen all alone and the first time as an adult i said you know what fuck it i'm channeling and I'm going into a psychic re revelation state at my sleepiest phase because I'm not I'm not doing it in a wakeful state like these fucking Satanists. And I said, okay, let's use drugs, let's drink. Got drunk as fuck, and I went into a meditative oh, state. Fuck didn't work for a couple of days. For for some days, I didn't sleep. I said, I need to know Christ is real. Okay, so he's talking about getting drunk, taking drugs, and then entering a meditative state. I would say that those states are mutually exclusive, because if you truly would be meditating, then you would be sober. If you're completely sober, you can concentrate on what is, the isness of the moment. This is what meditation is about. However, when you're drunk, you're dampening your neofrontal cortex, and therefore you're doing the exact opposite of meditating. You're sedated, if any anything you're intoxicated and therefore you're not in a meditative state using some new agey lingo here when you're drinking alcohol you're lowering your vibration and when you're meditating you're actually elevating your vibration in sleep i said i need to know christ is real let's go see these fucking demons and find out then okay immediately when i started hallucinating from no sleep i said okay here it comes and i started going oh there's nothing the most beautiful daydream I ever had that bled into night. And I started sleeping on my beanbag. I wasn't fucking sitting, I was like laying down. And it was a dream. I knew I was awake, but eh, am I awake? The girlfriend, no, no blood on her, runs up and hugs me. The fucking green grass outside, and it's a fucking, it's like Utah, and there's sunlight, and I'm like, Jew, it's a fucking dream. You didn't cut yourself. Everyone on the internet saying, like, you're going to kill yourself dating me like the last one and the last one. Like, all these girls who fell in love with me. This is fucking great. Like, yeah, it's just a dream. Brother. Yeah, for people that don't know, I come from a drug background myself. I used to sell drugs back in the day. And moreover, I was really deep into psychedelics, LED, mushrooms, ayahuasca. I even went so far to drink with the shamans in the Amazon rainforest. So I have my fair share with those substances myself, but especially during my time as a drug dealer, I was surrounded by similar people here. And guess what? This is simply drug talk. The best dream I ever had, channeling. And then everyone there taken from me, but they left me. And the feeling was you can't go to them. They don't want you. So I felt very alone. Then it got dark, no God. The highest level of psychosis I've ever felt in my life. And I yeah. said, okay, I'm drowning. The first ever uh, time I had a, what's that thing called? Sleep paralysis? Yeah. And I had no idea I was spiritual. You I didn't were know. Channeling demons? No, I was more. That sounds like um, you're channeling demons. 
Well, it's not like I'm spellcasting or anything. I'm yeah, this man had experiences without a spiritual framework. When I was in my early 20s, I was experimenting with lucid dreaming, sleep paralysis, out-of-body experiences, and all of those things. I was really proficient at it. I trained myself to exit my body every single night. I would fly over the city, come back to my body, etc., etc. However, I had no spiritual framework. And then when I returned to Orthodox Christianity, the faith of my parents, the faith of my nation, if you will. This is when those church fathers started warning me of demonic possession. Because every single time when you leave your body, your body is open to demonic possession. People believe that because they have a spiritual experience, out of a sudden they are spiritual masters. But you do not think that you are a bodybuilder on your first day in the gym. You do not think that you're a UFC fighter if you enter an octagon and you look around you. Out of a sudden, what? You're the UFC champion? Of course not. But this is what is happening with spiritual experiences, especially the drug-induced kind. None of us were ready for those spiritual experiences. Not me back in the day and not Jerka either. It is not as if you've been leveling up, meditating for years, training your consciousness. No, you induced a psychotic state through drugs. In that state, you are vulnerable. You're vulnerable for possession. And those are things that most new agers, for example, have no clue about. You have no idea how many people from the new age then seek exorcism or the Islamic equivalent, which is Rukia, to get rid of those demons that have possessed them. Uh, Self-harming uh, psychically, not like with a knife. Self-harming psychically sounds like I hate him. myself. I hate myself. Yeah, I was going there. Whatever, whatever. And it wasn't like verbal. It was like for two days straight without a phone in a dark room. And yeah, it was just weird. But anyways, and I've done this before. I used to be an alcoholic, so this is normal to me. But I used to do it subconsciously. This one, I'm going in there and in the deep. It is, of course, noteworthy to mention here that he, as a Muslim, was an alcoholic. Islam, of course, prohibits alcohol. Darkness, right? Where you don't even want to commit suicide because you're like in a dream. You're stuck. My first sleep paralysis, and I'm like, fuck, I know I'm asleep. This is sleep paralysis. Wait, I don't believe in sleep paralysis. This is not just chemicals firing in my head. The love I have for my mom that I'm losing here in this dream, it's not just chemicals in my head. This is spirit. I'm in the spirit world. I swear to God, I'm not lying. At the deepest point, I said, do that fucking guy. Do it. Fuck, let's test it. I'm here. Because I need God. But what the fuck? I don't get God. I don't get these practices, the meditation. Let's test it. Christ is king. <laughs> oh, I woke up. And I'm like, holy fuck, it worked. Holy fuck, that spell worked. The, the one thing to stop exactly right that spell worked but what does that tell us truly you were under the influence you were intoxicated you were on drugs however you say that you felt spirits around you and i'm not denying that it is absolutely possible that jinns were around you and that you in your altered state were able to perceive them however now the only thing that gets you out of that state is uttering jesus is lord astaghfirullah of course we do not believe this so once once you proclaim those words, the jinns let you go. You are freed. The spell is lifted. The real question here is, of course, what has happened? As Muslims, we do believe that jinns play tricks with you. And now, instead of you returning to the worship of one God, instead of you seeking refuge in God, seeking help from the one God, you seek help from a human, from a prophet, which, Islamically speaking, is, of course, shirk. You deviated from the pure monotheism. Who got you there? The jinn. It played tricks on your mind. It made you drink. It made you take drugs. Then it made you afraid, paralyzed. And the only way for that creature to let you free is by you denouncing monotheism, by you committing shirk. Don't you understand? If I didn't say that, and I only went in the dream state, the darkest state of my li life, just to do that, I swear to God I'm not lying, then nothing. No love for Christ didn't care for Christ, didn't come to God, right. nothing. Just burst it out as an adult. Yeah, in Orthodox Christianity, this was called prelest, which is a false spiritual epiphany. It is a spiritual deception. You believe that you experienced something. For you, it was absolutely real. You think that you found God, but ultimately, as you said yourself, nothing. 
crying. That's it. Nothing. Like one hour. You doing that Jake Paul ritual that you were criticizing Mike for? No, his was a breathing ritual. Mine was a self harm ritual with alcohol, where you really get trashed. And How, that that sounds worse. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But <laughs> the, the, the point is, I'm not channeling demons. I just wanted to go deep into that darkness. And yo. But what? how do you know? Are you a master shaman? Are you a master meditator? How would you distinguish between a demon and an angel? How would you truly know? Do you have any experience previously to this? Nothing happened for the next couple of weeks. And Adam well, calls me on the show and shit. And then I, and, and yeah, this is fucking recent. The worst month of my life. And I still hate, I still don't believe in God for some reason, even though it worked. You don't believe in God? No, no, at the time. But I said to myself, wait, Dreams are wish fulfillment from Freud. I don't believe in chemicals in my brains causing dreams like Sneeko and Andrew Tate and these. Wait a minute, that is spirit. So let me understand this. If Christ is king, worked, and Carl Jung said if a symbol affects billions of lives, the symbol's real, because it's on all of our mental psyche, right? I said to myself, oh fuck, I'm a Christian. And then I said, <laughs> I hate them. Turn the other cheek, they're all, f they're all I don't like this. And then I started reading about, bro, I was reading for weeks. And yeah, turning the other cheek did not work in practice either. So therefore, no wonder that you hate them because ultimately Christians went to the Crusades. They went to war and there they surely did not turn the other cheek. Destiny kept saying, aren't you worried that you're banned on Twitch? You're not doing anything for this ban. I don't give a fuck, bro. I'm with God, right? Let me fucking drown in debt if I have to. Fuck it, I'm with God, right? But I said to Destiny, I don't care. And I was like very nauseous. Sure everyone, family, friends. What are you doing? You're not working here. You don't have a girlfriend. You don't have friends. Whatever. I don't care. I don't care. I'll figure it out. I'm a nomad. Just kick it to LA. Literally found out all depictions of Jesus were masculine. And it's a psyop that he's feminine. And they're all buried throughout history. Found out everyone on earth was a Christian. And that was the default religion before all the new ones. I go so deep into Christianity. All right. So this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. In Islam, yes, we do have the claim that Islam is the first religion. However, how do we back up this claim? First and foremost, we need to dissect what Islam means. Islam simply means the submission to God. We are worshiping one God alone. We are submitting our will to that God. This is why this claim is congruent. If we go back to the first man and and the Christians will agree as well that the first man is Adam. Adam submitted his will to God. There was nothing else. There was no cross around. There was no other symbol around. There was no other God around. There was no other Trinity around. There was no Jesus around. So Adam surely did not say Jesus is Lord during his time. It is absolutely irrational. And this is why Islam is the only religion that has this red threat and clearly displays what religion is. Religion is the relationship to God, human to God. Adam was a Muslim, a believer, someone that submitted his will to that one God. There was nobody else. There were no other people around and there was only this one God. And he always will be. He is transcendent of time. He will never change. So therefore, if we have this all transcendent God, this timeless God, and we have one human around, this human doesn't even have a conceptualized religion. He only has a relationship of submission to God, a pure state of Islam. And then the story moves on to the other prophets. We have Noah, we have Abraham, we have Moses, and we have Jesus. And independent of the time frame, independent of the cultural customs of the people, those prophets submitted their will to God. This is why we say that if you look at Abraham, Abraham wasn't a Jew. And this is factual. Even if you ask the Jews, Abraham was not a Jew. He was not practicing rabbinic or Talmudic Judaism. Neither was he a Christian because Jesus wasn't around during his time. He was a man that believed in one God alone. He submitted his will to one God. But enough rambling. I hope you get the point. However, with Christianity, we cannot make that point because yet again, Jesus wasn't around for the longest time. The cross symbol wasn't around for the longest time. So how will you make a congruent argument for Noah being a Christian or let alone Adam, the first man, being a Christian? This is a non-argument. And I never saw Christ in the dream. I saw uh, more of like, uh, it really just the word, Christ is king. And then I'm like, right on Twitter and I started my crusade. Yeah, and it cannot be, of course, that you've been learning about Christ over and over and over and over again, and then you took drugs and then your subconscious brought up those words, right? And then I'm like, right on Twitter and I started my crusade.
immediately viral money. $500 consultations right now for one hour with me. Literally viral everywhere. Friends all around me. Heal Mike, love, family, are proud of me. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then I said, this has to be the work of demons. Say that you did it and see if you get canceled. The fucking didn't get canceled, exploded even more viral. And I'm like, I'm telling you the truth. All right, so you got material possessions after a demonic encounter and therefore Christianity is real. Rich and fucking famous. What's going on? And that's when you when you can tell the truth and be rich and famous, you know you're not working with a demon. That's the ultimate test, right? And I'm like, okay, what? tell it on YouTube, tell it this. And I was always like afraid that Nick Fuentes was a psyop and stuff. I'm like, that's the kid who red pilled me the most. Let's fucking go on his crusade. I know his chat's gonna call me a degenerate. Fuck those little they all, 99% of them love me. Fucking NFT crypto guys throwing money at me left and right. And then, hmm, I need to, uh, I need to do a PSYOP and get Myron to call me. And I did some stuff and Myron calls me. Myron, what the fuck, you fucking pussy. We start arguing on the phone. Then we're cool on the phone. Let's get on the show. Immediately, I said, I'm walking with God. I can't stop smiling. I bet this smile is going to translate into high level comedy. Maybe I can do 80% comedy on the show. Literally sat down and looked at Myron Fresh and I said, no, nah, I'm, I'm 29, I'm late, let's change my life. 28 million hits on TikTok from 800. The most, Andrew Tate was there a year and nobody knew who he was. 72,000 new followers gained in one appearance. The most viral fucking appearance ever. It's not like fucking the Nelk Boys could sit down and fucking pop off there just from talking. And then I realized I really don't understand what point he tries to make with this. So by this default, all the celebrities, the Hollywood celebrities must be the most holy people on this planet. The rock must be sent down by God and we should all worship Lady Gaga. So holy fuck, I don't get my it. whole life, all my friends and family told me the stuff I study, Masonic literature and the Bible and everything like that is useless. It's not making money. It all started, God starts pouring through me, through the Holy Spirit, starts bleeding into my content. Now, you know what, in the number one comment I get with 2000 upvotes, dude, he has a master over comedy, conspiracy, romance, dating, fu he, he's funny, he's good looking. This is the ultimate creator. This is the greatest influencer. He tells the truth and he says it's the fucking literally the number one influencer to actually go through the portal. I come from an Orthodox Christian background. As I said, I spent a lot of times with Orthodox monks, priests, archbishops. I read the whole Bible. I spent time in the monastery, etc., etc. you name it. And I can tell you that if somebody proclaims to be filled with the Holy Spirit, usually one takeaway is that they're not cursing. Of entertainment with a bunch of money, big deals and contracts, documentaries, but tell, but Jay and not getting banned. And so literally I'm the first person on the internet to be this blessed and I turned to my head and I said Andrew Tate's a f like that's what happens when you have Christ what the fuck did that guy do some OnlyFans management and then he bought his fucking marketing like I'm literally I didn't buy no marketing I was just walk with Christ and and I'm telling you if this was a Dragon Ball battle I'd be holding Andrew Tate's punch with one finger that's how viral I am okay but and now look at this David Dobrik's, David Dobrik's management team reached out to me, said, hey, we want to do a $7,000 process marketing you through a million accounts. We have this monopoly on the system software we made. 7000 a week. I said, no, I'm too famous. I don't do that shit. I'll do it myself. They said, we're doing it for free. You're going to remember us. I said, what? 600,000 viewer clip. They already got me. The next one was two million and they said hey this week you're about to see the compounding effect you're going to see that in a lower level like andrew tate and they said remember you're a comedian never get banned don't be like tate start eight big youtubers are moving to miami just to work with me so they're like i'm gonna have one day with sneaker one day with this guy and everyone's cross-pollinating viewership with me you're telling me christ is not real fuck out of here thank you for the time all right guys, this is it for today's video. It is an absolutely amazing example of the issues of our time. Because people nowadays conflate becoming viral with the true faith, with meaningfulness. How does this mean anything? As I said already, you have Hollywood stars that are rich and famous. You have a Kanye West that was talking about Jesus. Who 
cares? If you were a true Christian, and I back in the day surely was a real Christian, you would understand that Christians are commanded to live a lowly life. Christians are commanded to live poorly. Jesus himself, if you believe in him, said, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Of course, the Bible proclaims as well that the love of money is the root of all evil. So now you're talking about viral clicks, you're talking about money, you're talking about fame. How does this go hand in hand with Christianity? This is a genuine question. If you truly believe in Jesus and Jesus in the Bible tells you that it's almost impossible to enter the kingdom of God as a rich man. Why are you even aspiring to become rich in the first place? And moreover, the real question here is, of course, how do you know that you saw Jesus in the first place? Matter of fact, you said that you never saw Jesus. So how do you know that your experience was real? How do you know that you haven't been demonically possessed? If you look at certain dark magicians like Aleister Crowley, for example, he used drugs extensively, cocaine, alcohol, opiates, to become demonically possessed. There was the whole name of the game. Take drugs, get demonically possessed and channel certain information. Now count one and one together. If you look at Christianity, if you look at true Christians, you look at practicing monks, bishops, archbishops, etc, etc. Do those people take drugs for spiritual experiences? Do those people enter into sleep paralysis, lucid dreaming? If the answer to this is no, which it is, then the follow-up question becomes why do you then believe that your experience was authentic and coming directly from Jesus? As I said already, it is contradicting the statements of Jesus. All the followers of Christ were were poor. But as I said, it is a great example because it shows the delusion of our time. People believing they will get some sort of meaning from clicks. You won't take those clicks with you. You won't take the money with you when you're standing in front of your creator. As Muslims, we believe that there is only one creator. We're not dividing his power further into a Holy Spirit, into a son. No, he is one. He is unique. He is the almighty. All power lays with him. And in him we seek refuge away from the devil. In him we seek refuge not in a lesser creature. Alright guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.